So let's again change the scenario, same patient, uh, but at the get-go we had learned that this patient wasn't ALK positive, it was in fact positive for KRAS, again a smoker, which is not unusual. Done well for six months on bevacizumab, but is finally starting to have disease progression. How would you handle this patient? What new agents are potentially available for this individual? Well, you know, KRAS is a, is a very tough area, you know, and um, it, it's often associated with smoking. And in the adenocarcinoma population, it can be as many as 25 to 30 percent of the patients. And, you know, it's a complicated area, too, because not all KRAS mutations are the same. But just talking in general about KRAS, basically KRAS is, you know, serves as a molecular switch. And, and in patients who have a mutation in KRAS, the KRAS is uh, left in the active form where it binds GTP. And by binding GTP, it, it anchors to the, the membrane, and it activates a number of signal transduction pathways, including uh, PI3 kinase AKT, uh, the, the, path, the, the MEK uh, pathway. And uh, clearly, um, um, in patients with mutated KRAS, there are very few options. You know, way back when, you know, you and I uh, uh, remember doing trials with farnesyl transferase inhibitors. We thought that if we could interfere with the enzyme, which, uh, w which modifies the protein, allowing it to anchor to the cell surface, we might have an effect. The problem is when you block uh, farnesyl transferase, um, another enzyme, geronial, geronial transferase, uh, overcomes that blockage. Um, and uh, there had been some trials that looked at combining the, the two inhibitors together, and, and those, unfortunately, um, are probably too toxic. There are a number of ways of looking at KRAS right now. I'd say, you know, one that's, you know, quite prominent is to look at inhibitors of MEK. Um, some KRAS mutated cell lines and, and tumors in animal models, and now in, in human uh, uh, patients, we are seeing that MEK inhibitors can have an effect. There, there are two inhibitors now that are our most prominent ones, um, AZD6244, also known as cellul cellumetinib, and, uh, and another, um, uh, cremetinib, um, and uh, just recently approved um, in another in uh, indication. And both of these agents are showing some promise. The cellumetinib, there was a trial in combination with uh, docetaxel, which showed an improvement in um, progression and overall survival. Um, so a trend, I think, for overall survival. A, a trend, but, but quite close, but clearly an, an, a, a quite profound PFS benefit. You know, the question there is, you know, will this work only in, K in KRAS mutated patients, or is it more of a general phenomenon? And I think we'll learn, learn more about that in, in future clinical trials. So that's one approach. The other approach that's being uh, looked at is combination therapy. So to combine, um, you know, based on some work from uh, Jeff Engelman uh, uh, a number of years back, showing that if you combine a PI3 kinase or an AKT inhibitor um, with a MEK inhibitor, you can see effects as well. We're actually studying that in our battle trials. Think you would do that preferentially in the second line, or go with the standard cytotoxic plus one of the new MEK inhibitors? I'd probably um, look for. Um, well, that would all still be on clinical trial, mm -hmm. so you'd have to look for a trial of docetaxel plus one of the new uh, MEK inhibitors. Many of those trials might be, be randomized. The other, you know, thing at, at our site when we see patients with KRAS, we, we steer them toward our battle trial because on that study we we do have an arm of uh, the cellumetinib. Uh, plus a drug MK2206, which is an AKT inhibitor, or we've put very many of these patients on, on therapy, immune therapy, uh, with PD-1 or uh, PD-L1 antibodies with some significant early success. Discussing in more detail. And there was a very interesting presentation uh, this year uh, at the ASCO meeting on yet another uh, pathway on BRAF mm -hmm. um, the from the French. Mm -hmm. uh, care to comment on that? Again, uh, the percentage of patients who might harbor that uh, abnormality and the activity right. so, of the drug? So BRAF mutations are, are quite interesting. You know, obviously we have the V600E, um, and it probably is about 2%, we estimate, of the lung adenocarcinoma population. And there was that trial that suggested that dibrafenib might actually have benefit for this group. So I think what we're seeing is the adenocarcinoma population is getting parsed out into very small subpopulations, but we can find effective agents for those subpopulations of patients. So what percentage of patients now, at least with adenocarcinoma, do you think have uh, actionable mutations or well, other right. molecular so abnormalities? Because translocations, of course, not, aren't strictly uh, yeah. mutations. So, so the LCMC originally predicted 54%, but we now believe that we can get up to 67% or so of an identifiable driver mutation. Now, whether or not we have something that's actionable right now is a different story. So commercially available, it's probably it. only about a quarter of oh, the patients. That's correct. That's correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm.